Hello YouTube and welcome to this Savage Push Day. This is episode 3 of the Hypertrophy Log. If you have missed the previous installments, they are in the description for you. Part 1 was an arm day, part 2 was a leg day. So naturally today we're going to focus on the chest. But you'll see that this is not just any push day because I follow what I call a gentleman split. Which, if you don't know what it is, you can look up one of the many videos I made on the topic. It's a type of split that follows an upper low template with a twist, which is that you have much more freedom to hit any muscle you want to hit. So in a sense, it's an upper day that is going to be focused on muscles like the chest and the triceps, but it rotates. Some of my upper days, for example, are going to be more focused on the shoulders, and I never stop myself from eating certain muscles, even if they're not technically a push movement. So for example, in today's episode, you will see that I will also hit the forearms super, super hard because on that day they were fresh and I want meaty forearms and the best way to accomplish that is to train them like a maniac. Today's session is going to be made up of eight different movements that are going to be split in two different giant sets. And as you'll see, I do not take any breaks in between the exercises. I just rest at the end of the set. You will only see the first set of each exercise but know that I do the exact same rotation of movements three to four times depending on how much volume I want to accumulate for that day. So let us get started with that upper day beginning with the main movement of the day and the one that is going to target the chest, which is going to be a power fly. Some people also call it, I believe, the barrel press. The idea is very simple. It's not a dumbbell bench press, it's not a fly, it's an hybrid in between. So what you're going to be doing is, you're going to go into what looks like a neutral grip dumbbell bench press, but instead of tucking the elbows in, you're going to open up the chest and allow the weight to really stretch the muscle. As you'll see, this does not mean that you have to open up the elbow excessively. You can still keep it somewhat tucked, but there is much more distance between the chest and the dumbbell that there would be in a regular bench press. The goal of this movement is to get the best of both foods. You get the stability and the strength that comes with stacking the joints, while at the same time getting the benefit of getting more out of less weight. I also add a pose at the bottom to emphasize the stretch on the pec and I do a slow negative. My goal is really to fill that muscle and with that movement there's really no way around it. The triceps will not be the limiting factor and neither will be the shoulders. And that's the good thing about that variation of the press if you have shoulder problems, if you have elbow tendonitis like I have, this will not be an issue at all because it's really, really easy on the tendons. As someone who has chest as a strong point and who doesn't do much volume for the chest at all, I do between 8 and 12 sets a week. This is a movement that I always tend to prioritize because it gives you so much benefits and the drawbacks are so little that I think that anyone who is doing flies, with dumbbells at least, should give this variation a try and most likely you'll never go back to regular flies because you'll find out that biomechanically speaking, this makes much more sense. Now, right after this, I move on directly to an upper back movement, this time a quote-unquote cable pullover. So this is my first back movement of the day, one that is going to nicely warm me up for pull-ups by getting my shoulder blades moving. It also taxes the longer of the tricep for the next movement you will be seeing but it won't hurt my performance when I finally move to the big movement for the lats. And after that, I move on to easy bar scroll crushers, which are one of my favorite longer level tricep exercise. Technically, they're not scroll crushers because I do them with a lot of shoulder extension, so they're more line triceps extension, I guess. This is my favorite way to do them because I find personally that regular scroll crushers destroy my elbow tendons and I already have tendonitis, so I really cannot allow myself to get even deeper into that rabbit hole. And you will see, as I go into the first negative, that I correct my form a bit because too much of my upper back was off the bench, so I wasn't stable. My feet are also on the bench, so as to make sure that my chest and my ribcage is elevated and not sitting flat. And then I just go into the movement and I stick to the range of motion that hits the longer than tricep the most. And you will immediately notice that I'm crooked, meaning that my arms go into one direction. 
That is the sad reality of uh, having scoliosis. I've been doing that exercise and in reality any extension like this for as long as I can remember. But for now, I don't have any problems with it. So I keep going like that. Again, a great exercise for the tricep, one that is easy to go to failure too, especially if you have a partner. But the thing that is on that day wasn't so bad, so I was quite happy to be able to do an exercise that is usually quite problematic for the tendons. And as you've noticed, I finally added the weight of the lifts in kilograms. I had many people, many Europeans who were quite upset in the comments last time because me, a Frenchman, added only the weight in pounds even though that's not even the metric that we use in my country. And even though usually I don't negotiate with tourists, I must admit that they have a point. On top of that, some of them were Serbians and I don't want my home gym to get bombed. So I actually gave in to the requests. You are much obliged. And then I move on to another movement that is not super intense, but is in a way a preparation for what is to come. So these are bended hammer curls with a supination at the bottom. So you don't see it quite well here, but I actually rotate my, my wrist and I supinate at the bottom to allow for a stretch of the bicep. And then I pronate into the positive so as to recruit as much forearms as possible. It is a really good movement, especially because for the second giant set, I will be hitting some pronated pull-ups and I will be also hitting some reverse curls. So I want every single muscle that is going to be involved in these two movements to be as nimble and as ready for performance as possible. And I, of course, got a failure on these. Now, it might not look like it because you don't see me fail. You, know, you don't see me shake. I don't fight like crazy for the last reps. It's for the simple reason that what I call failure is mechanical failure. So as long as the arm can go up and down with no assistance, then I keep going. And the second I feel like the resistance forces me to either use my body weight or shift my torso forward, I stop the set because to me, there is no point in continuing. You are starting to recruit muscles that should not be recruited for that movement. A lot of people don't think like this when it comes to failure, but that is personally my approach. Also, most muscular pose uh, flexes are abundant in these logs. I just cannot resist flexing when there's a camera in the room. You will forgive me for that. So the first giant set had an heavy chest movement followed by an upper back movement. Then there was a long head of the tricep movement. And after that, there was a forearm and bicep movement. So the next push movement that opens the following giant set is going to be one that is going to be chest and long head of the tricep at the same time. And it's a movement that was already featured in episode zero of the hypertrophy logs. And that is a sphinx triceps push up, quote unquote. So it's a push-up where your hands are very close together and you initiate the movement not by actually opening up the chest, but by breaking at the elbow. So what really works in that motion is not really the shoulders and chest, it's more chest and longer of the tricep. And this is really a great variation of the push-up for people who are more advanced and who want to work the back of the arm. It really works effectively. And it's also easy on the tendons if you do them with a slow negative, which is always great because tendons, elbow tendons get beat up by push days and you end up with tendonitis. It's almost an inevitability for any lifter. So anything that is going to not aggravate that problem is always welcome. Now, right after that motion, you will see me superset it with a upper back movement. This is not the type of movement that is going to build mass. You won't get thick juicy traps like you're seeing here of that movement and I will not be claiming that this is how I build them. However, this is extremely important to work on your shoulder blades mobility because shoulder problems oftentimes can come from a weak upper back, an immobile upper back and this is how you train it. So what I recommend you guys do is on any push days if you can have a movement that is going to recruit that back of the shoulder and that upper back in particular to keep it nimble, absolutely do it. It will be worth it. That movement is a bitch. Anyone who has done it knows it's really difficult. It's really hard, but it must be done. This is how you keep healthy shoulders and you keep pressing forever. You do not want to be the guy in his 30s or 40s who cannot bench press, who cannot overhead press because his shoulders are shot. This is not the life of a natural bodybuilder. Natural bodybuilding is about health. So keep your joints healthy. And then after that, we move to the aforementioned 
pull-ups. So this is one of my favorite variations of pull-ups. I love all pull-ups almost equally, but the Tao version is a killer. It's a monster, especially done with a close grip and a pronated grip. So what you see me do here is I go into a slow negative and then I explode back up. I stretch the lats, I stretch the upper back and I explode back up. You will be humbled by these pull-ups because gripping onto towels is extremely difficult on the fingers. You will suffer on that movement, especially if you are a big dude like I am. I'm 215 in the footage, I have 20 pounds of ankle weight, so it's quite difficult, but this is extremely good for both hypertrophy of the forearm and the upper back. So I recommend you do it. As you see, I go into a full stretch. I go into my feet, literally touch the floor, not the box, the floor. And I stop when I cannot go anymore. Once you are advanced enough in grip strength, quote unquote, with the towels, you can really start to push that movement to failure. And once that big compound is taken care of, I move on to ab isolation. And this is a variation that I want you guys to look at. Because I have many people who ask me, hey, NH, you talk about ab isolation, you talk about sit-ups all the time, but sit-ups hurt my back. Well, I have a solution for you. You can do banded sit-ups. So you do exactly what I did. You take a resistance band, you tie it at the top of the rack, and then you lay flat onto your back and you do sit-ups in that fashion. That way you don't have to recruit the hips. You don't have to actually round the lower back at the bottom of the full extension of the spine, which tends to be the reason why people get pain and you can get a nice six pack off of this. The way I do them is a bit special, meaning that I'm not exactly straight, which is not surprising, I'm a Frenchman. But what I mean rather here is that my spine is not facing the bend. I'm slightly tilted towards one side. And that is in order to recruit more obliques and more serratus on the side where I am tilted. I'm not exaggerating it. I'm not like trying to just twist my spine, it would be uncomfortable. And I also don't twist at the top or the bottom. I stay twisted. So I stay facing the direction where I want to recruit more obliques and more serratus. This is a bit more advanced, but it works tremendously well. You notice that the execution is slow on the negative and explosive on the way up. Because on the way up, that's when you get the most help from the band. And on the negative, the band doesn't help that much. You have to actually catch your own body weight. So this is the way to do it. If you do them fast, the band is just going to absorb all of the energy of the momentum and you're going to do absolutely nothing. So milk those negatives as much as possible. This is a super friendly ab exercise you can do on any upper day. It's super easy to superset, so give it a try. This is the promotion moment where I show you my mug. I am quite proud. It's a mug with a kitty on it. It's one of my favorite mugs of all time because I love cats dearly. And then after that, there is a bit of a silly goose moment because one of my favorite songs was playing on the little portable radio. And for the connoisseurs out there, it was the soundtrack of Space Jam, which is one of my favorite childhood movies. Anyone who says that Space Jam sucks is a hater. I don't want to hear anything about it. It is a masterpiece. Michael Jordan is a great actor. Go fuck yourself. And if you can read my lips, you can actually read the words of Space Jam that I'm singing as I'm dancing. Then we move on to a great form exercise, the reverse curl. I want you guys to pay attention to my grip. This is a force grip. My thumb is not wrapped around the bar. If you do reverse curls, do them with that grip. If not, you're going to have a tendency to recruit too much wrist. You're going to rely on structure too much. This is the proper way, in my opinion, to do them. I like to do them with a close grip. I changed my stance on that. I used to be a wide grip boy, but the issue with the wide grip is that it cuts range of motion. So here I go as deep as I can with a full stretch and then up until I cannot go up anymore. And I really squeeze it. For some reason, pulling my thumbs up helps in that motion, even though you would think, well, you removed, a th you removed the finger from the movement, from the grip. How is it easier? I don't know and I don't care. I just know that it actually works, so maybe give it a try. This is typically the type of isolation movement that you must go to failure on. And that concludes the day. So as is tradition, I'm going to include 
both giant sets on your screen right now for those of you who struggle to look at my magnificent body and listen to me at the same time. I know it can be quite hard to focus. So on that day, we opened with a power fly and then we followed with the equivalent of a cable pullover, after which we did some line triceps extension that were themselves followed by some resistance band hammer curls. Three to four sets of that for each exercise. Then we move on to the second giant set that opens with what I call tricep push-ups, then some pseudo snow angels with very small plates for the upper back. Then I did some towel pronated pull-ups and we closed the day with some ab isolation with bended sit-ups and then some reverse curls using an easy bar and a false grip. So you see that the logic for my upper days, be them arm day or push day, is always the same. Six to eight exercises, a medley of movements for the chest, for the upper back, for the biceps, for the longer of the tricep, all arranged in a fashion that is going to hit what must be hit on that day. So, because my shoulders were cooked, you did not see me do any vertical presses. And instead, I trained chest and I also put some emphasis on the forearms. The forearms recover quickly. You can hit them hard several times a week. As long as you have built the work capacity, it should not be an issue. And that is going to be that for this savage push day. So if you have any questions in the comments, let me know. The next day up should be technically a back day. So I'm going to show you how I destroy my back on an upper day, the methods that I use. And if you enjoy these hypertrophy logs, you can always support my work on my coffee page. You can pledge, you can donate. Anything is appreciated. And I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.